And it used to be, I'm not sure if it is now, but it used to be the number one thing that would come up, what is love? Because people were trying really hard to figure out if what they were feeling was love. Now, I wonder if any of you have ever looked up something like that. You've looked up what certain emotions are. But I wonder if any of you have ever had to look up suffering or look up pain. In other words, did you not know that you were going through pain? Can you, can you, if, if you, if you have a crush on somebody, can you, can you ignore that for a while? Can you shut that out of your mind for a while and pretend like it's not true? Maybe, but have you ever been in intense, deep suffering and been able to do the same thing, just block it out of your head and pretend like it's not there? Probably not. And there's one thing about pain and suffering is that no matter how bad you think that, that something can hurt, just give it time. You might think, wow, this is the worst pain I've ever felt. There should always be an asterisk on that. It's the worst pain you have felt so far. There is more pain to experience. There is more suffering to experience. Because one thing is absolutely true about life. That life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer. But one thing that you might be able to do if you play your cards right is you can choose what it is that you're going to suffer for. ourselves is a very difficult thing. That's why the article that we're looking at right now with the uh, simulated universe one, one of the questions asks you about how taking a, uh, a view that we might be living within a simulation can humble a person. And if we, if we don't understand how that could humble a person, and not that it would humble you, not that it does humble you, but just how could it be possible that it would humble a person, putting ourselves into the, into the, into the views of, of other people. And we just, we have this fear for some reason that if we put our views, we put our heads into the views of other people that somehow those views are gonna become ours as though that would be the worst thing in the world. But when you're talking here about, forget, about being hard to forget pain, I don't know, does anybody, I wonder if anybody here has ever looked up something like, I think I was mentioning before that, when you look up the word love in, in, on, on Google, you might type in like, what is? And a lot of times it'll finish up the, the, the statement that you're, it thinks you're going to make. And it used to be, I'm not sure if it is now, but it used to be the number one thing that would come up, what is love? Because people were trying really hard to figure out if what they were feeling was love. Now, I wonder if any of you have ever looked up something like that. You've looked up what certain emotions are. But I wonder if any of you have ever had to look up suffering or look up pain. In other words, did you not know that you were going through pain? Can you, can you, if, if, you, if you have a crush on somebody, can you, can you ignore that for a while? Can you shut that out of your mind for a while and pretend like it's not true? Maybe, but have you ever been in intense, deep suffering and been able to do the same thing, just block it out of your head and pretend like it's not there? Probably not, probably not. And even if you can, it's only gonna be for a few seconds because there's one thing that we can know about suffering is that there's no question about it. You know what suffering is. You're, if you type in what is, suffering is probably not gonna be on that list. Pain is probably not gonna be on that list. Because if you've, been in, if, you've, if you've suffered before, if you've been in pain before, you know it. And everybody here, I'm sure, can look back in their lives and name times that they've been in pain. And there's one thing about pain and suffering, it's that no matter how bad you think that, that something can hurt, just give it time. You might think, wow, this is the worst pain I've ever felt. There should always be an asterisk on that. It's the worst pain you have felt so far. There is more pain to experience. There is more suffering to experience because one thing is absolutely true about life. That life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer. But one thing that you might be able to do if you play your cards right is you can choose what it is that you're going to suffer for. You aren't always gonna be able to choose whether or not you get scars, but you can choose what you get scars for. And that might be part of the, the overall experience of life that we, we kind of orient ourselves towards, that we wanna find the things in life that are worth suffering for. You know, like we, we think about the kind of, like if, you're, if, if you're in competition, for example, let's say that you're a football player, or even if you're a dancer, anything that's going to be geared towards putting yourself up against other people. There's going to be an intense amount of suffering. In fact, the more suffering that you go through, probably the better you're going to be at the thing that you're putting yourself into. If you're a boxer, you don't get to box and not have broken noses and scars and broken hands. You're going to have those things if you're training properly. 
But the point is, is that you damage those things in training so that you don't damage them in the ring, so that you win in the competition. You don't get to be a, a, an advanced dancer and, and get to have pretty feet if you're doing it properly, if you're doing it at a, at a real competition level. You're going to have broken toes and broken nails and stuff like that. Now, the question is, what is it you're going to suffer for? Are you going to suffer for having broken toes and broken hands and broken noses? Or are you going to suffer for never having pushed yourself before? Are you going to suffer for going out there half prepared with great looking hands and then get your ass kicked in the ring because you weren't really ready for it? What's the suffering that you're going to choose? Like everybody here who's here right now, you have to suffer to figure out, am I, am I going to go through school? Am I going to show up every day, sit in there, and do these journal things, or do I have the suffering of having to, re to, to repeat this class during a summer school or during an intercession? We all have those choices to make. You don't get to choose not to suffer, man. It's part of the deal of being alive. The question is, what are you going to choose to suffer for? Because once you make a choice that you're going to suffer for, is it's not going to be as bad of a sacrifice, because you, you, you realize at any moment, I'm choosing this path, which means it's better than the other path, which means it's a better place to be. It's a call. So he says, we don't have any scars to show for happiness. Maybe, maybe. I don't know if any of you have any fun scars, like a scar you've got doing something funny or something silly. I have a few of them. I have a scar on my knee from, from swinging from a, from a planter when I was a little kid. It was hanging from a tree and I jumped on it and started swinging back and forth and then the, 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 the rope broke and the, the, the porcelain pot landed on my knee and shattered and it cut my knee all open. That's a funny one in retrospect. I also have a, a slash on my stomach from where I was stabbed one time in the stomach. Not as much fun. Funny story afterwards, but not nearly as much fun. But you have fun scars, you have bad scars, but it's those emotional scars that that, that last. Now, the question I suppose is going to be how much time do you spend focusing on those emotional scars? How much time do you spend focusing on those happy parts? Because it's true that life is suffering. Life can also be so much more than that. But it's true that you don't learn a lot from peace. And so it kind of begs that question because, again, we oftentimes say that you have to, to go through difficulties to, to learn. Um, I don't always know that that's true. There are a lot of things that we can learn by not going through them personally. You can learn a lot by, by looking at what other people have gone through, seeing what other people have suffered. You can look around your neighborhood, look around your family, look around your friends, look around your friends' families and their neighborhoods, and you can see a whole lot of bad decisions that have led people to where they are at this moment. As you walk up and down Highland after school, I wonder if you poked your head into most of those shops and you asked those people who are working there, hey, I'm in high school, I want to ask you, when you were in high school, did you one day dream of working at, I don't know, a flower shop, or working at Walmart, or working at this restaurant? And most people would probably say, no, not my dream. That doesn't mean it's bad work, it doesn't mean it's dishonorable. Any work that you do that's, that's legal and honorable, that provides for your family, is noble. You should do it. It just probably isn't most people's dreams, and you almost wonder, what was the suffering that you chose instead? Because this is the suffering that you chose instead, to be someplace you don't want to be for the rest of your life. What was the suffering that you avoided earlier in, the, in your life that's put you to where you are right now? So it almost begs that question about how little we can learn from, from victory. And it's probably an explanation for why we seek so much drama, and why we seek so much strife. Because if your life was perfect, I wonder how long you would let it be perfect. I wonder how long it would take us to start to, to spice up our lives by trying to find problems and troubles in our lives, to create things to overcome. Because it isn't just that you, that you learn from overcoming things, it's also that you entertain yourself by overcoming things. And you do grow from overcoming things. If you overcome them, you also grow in a different direction if you don't overcome things if you let them defeat you. But you know, that's, that's a personal call, how you're gonna to respond to these things. But, man, it's hard to forget pain, especially if you, if you, if you refuse to forget it. And it's difficult to, to remember sweetness if you simply refuse to, for, to remember it. So which of those two sides you end up on is gonna largely be a, a matter of choice you're gonna find.
questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques.